Hello dear friends, may God bless all of you and may the Holy Spirit, the guide of those who have given their heart, their will, their desires, their, their dreams, those who have given their all on the altar, May you all be guided by the Holy Spirit so that you may remain steadfast against the traps of the devil. Pay attention to this very important thing. Today is the 12th day of the new year and I've been asking God, my Lord, what do you want from me? What do you desire from me? And the Holy Spirit has been speaking strongly inside of me, especially in these days that we were on Sinai and also in meeting with the bishops from all the world. This is the word which God gave us for all of us, all those who make themselves available to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Everyone, whether from church A, B, C, it doesn't matter the denomination, it doesn't matter the plate of the church. What matters is the person, is the human being. It's the person to whom Jesus gave his life for. He gave his soul in the exchange for that person's soul. So it's for everyone, regardless of their belief, regardless of whether or not they deserve it. But once they believe in the Lord Jesus, then each person obviously has to receive this warning from God Himself. It's the twelfth day of the year. Eleven days have already passed by. It's the twelfth day, so the days are going by fast. So pay attention to what the Holy Spirit says through His servant, the Apostle Paul. He says, finally, my brethren, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord, meaning lean on Him and in the power of His might, obviously, in the Holy Spirit. And then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Meaning, we don't have to wrestle against human beings. We have to wrestle against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Meaning, the Holy Spirit says that our daily wrestle, our daily battle, yours, mine, all of us it is against the spiritual force of darkness. Therefore, when we look at someone and see them as an enemy, in reality, they are not our enemy. Our enemy is what is behind that person. It's the one who is using that person in order to harm us. So, our fight is not against that person. Our fight is against the hosts of hell, 
and they are spiritual. Your fight, my fight, is constant. It's 24-7. We have to wage war. 24-7. We have to be steadfast in Jesus, who is the rock. And not turning to the right, nor to the left, but remaining always steadfast, looking at the aim, our aim, which is the salvation of our own soul. So he says here, he speaks about the armor of God, which, by the way, is the subject for our Wednesday meetings, which we started before yesterday, and we are going to continue on this, so people can take advantage of this spiritual armor and they can then resist in the evil day. So the Holy Spirit says, put on the whole armor of God. We saw and we've seen that the church of Ephesus, to whom he sent a letter saying, to the angel of the church of Ephesus. The angel of the church of Ephesus was a man of God. He took care of the church in Ephesus, which was, at the time, the strongest church. From Ephesus, the other six churches were born. So, Ephesus was a strong, a powerful church. However, the angel of the church of Ephesus, despite of his intense work and his battles, despite of his works for God, still this angel had fallen, even though he had been filled with the Holy Spirit. The angel of the church of Ephesus fell. Did you know that? Very well, it's written there. Jesus said, remember therefore where you have fallen. Remember where you have fallen. He was fallen, but he continued to do the work. He continued to preach the gospel. He continued to be, let's say, God-fearing. However, at a certain moment, he left his first love. He abandoned his first love. He focused on the works, meaning on the gifts. He focused on the gifts of the Spirit and forgot about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, the main one. And this is what has been happening quite a lot in these final days. And it will continue to happen. Because many boast about what they've done for Jesus. However, within them, they've already left their first love. You know the first love. We already spoke a lot about this here. However, the first love is the first love. The first love cannot be forgotten. Do you remember your first love, your first boyfriend, your first girlfriend? Do you remember? Of course you do, you can't forget. So, when we know the Lord Jesus, then the first love is born, you know, the first love of our lives. Then we give our lives to Him, our passions, our dreams, our will, we submit ourselves, we submit our will, our dreams and personal projects, we submit everything to Him. Why? Because of this love, not the love that is a feeling, an emotion, no, but an, an intelligent love, a love that is materialized, it's materialized in actions, in behavior, in character. And when a person is in their first love and they live by this first love, then our Lord Jesus Christ, 
his name is sanctified in that person's life. So we are not, or we don't sanctify the name of our Lord Jesus in the works we do, in the good works, in a lot of work and perseverance and patience. No, we show our love towards Jesus in our character, in our care, our care not to profane the name of our Lord, because we profess, whether we like it or not, everyone who considers themselves a Christian, they profess their faith in Jesus, but to profess their faith is not enough. You have to have the character, the Christian character, to walk in truth, to live according to the character that the Holy Spirit gives us. Only He is capable of forming in us a divine character by which our Lord Jesus will have His name sanctified in our lives. Do you remember, for example, when the mother, the father has a child, son, a daughter that does well in school, that is, let's say, you know, very smart, very intelligent, then they honor their mother and their father because they do well at school, they have a very good behavior, they don't get involved with crime or bad company, nothing like that. They are, you know, righteous, a person of integrity. Their teachers, you know, complement them, their actions, and they ask, oh, who is the, the mother? Who is the father of this person? Oh, okay. So the teachers can see that they have a good education. They have a different spirit not like the other ones who like to do messy things. Very well. Jesus wants to be honored like this in my life, in your life, in our life. Much more than just saying, oh, I believe in Jesus. More than just having works. Because if it's for works, you know, the angel of the church of Ephesus had a lot of works, wonderful works. Jesus complemented his works. However, he had abandoned the first love, meaning that desire, that passion towards God. He had abandoned his first love. For you who by any chance are in this situation, you can return, dear friend, because Jesus said to the angel of the church of Ephesus, he said, repent, remember where you have fallen, remember where you have fallen and repent. So God, and, and repentance is not a feeling, it's action. You make a turn of 180 degrees, meaning if you are going towards north, you turn around and you go towards south, towards the right direction, or vice versa. The point is that when a person carries within themselves the love, the first love, then they are, or they sanctify the name of the Lord who is in them, our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this, we will be known, not by what we speak or we do, but who we are, our character, our actions being truthful. We are not perfect, but God doesn't require perfection from people, but He requires a perfect character. He requires this, that we may be perfect as He is perfect, which means our intentions, our character, our way of being, our life, you know, inclined towards Him. This is to fear God. This is the first love. 
one of the signs that a person is in their first love. We are going to be speaking a bit more about this in these following days. And you who desire, obviously, to return to your first love, you who want to come back to your first love, this is a sign from God to you. Just the fact that you want to go back to your first love, you feel the need to return, it's the Holy Spirit that is touching you. But of course, you have to take action. It's not enough to feel like it. You have to act. Act this faith. So, return. Go back to your first love. Go back to your first works. It's so nice, isn't it? Remember when you were so used by God, you'd feel so happy, didn't you? But for some reason, you grew cold in your faith and your first love was left and you grew cold naturally. If the first love is no longer there, then another love comes in or other loves come in that made you cold. But don't be that discouraged because just as Jesus was patient towards the angel of the church of Ephesus, he is patient towards you, towards myself and all those who reason. Go back. Remember where you have fallen. And repent, which means make a turn of 180 degrees and start a new life with God. Okay? We are in the 12th day of the year and the days are going by quickly, aren't they? Very quickly. Yeah. This shows that the return of our Lord is going to be quick. And those who reason will hear and obey His Word, the Word of God. Therefore, be strong. Strengthen your faith, dear friends. Go back to your first love because you only have to gain. And the Lord God, of course. May God bless you all and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.